Hey guys, this is Susan with Pack Leader Dog Training, and I'm here with Rachel with Rachel Kohler Dog Training, and we're here for Q&A 27. Happy Q&A Tuesday, Susan. Yes. Hope you're having a blessed Tuesday. I'm having the most blessed Tuesday. You know what's crazy, Susan? What? So usually, like, Tuesday seems to come really fast. Like, yep. there's usually a day in the week where it's like, okay, like, it's going to be forever until Tuesday. And then here it is. And now it's finally Q&A Tuesday. My sense of time is so messed up after last week. And I had three days off recovering from having my wisdom teeth out. Oh, yeah. My sense of time is just, I'm so confused. I feel like we haven't done the q and A in like a month now. Did we miss a week by accident? It does feel like it's been a while. No, right? but we're gonna miss next Tuesday. We are. We are missing Tuesday the sixth because somebody, me, um, scheduled a photo shoot. So Gaia and I will be out doing a photo shoot um, on the sixth. That's so awesome. I'm so Which exciting. Cool, because then I'll get to post super cute pictures of me and Kaya together. No, it's gonna be so uh, great. Are you just going off property for that? Huh? Are, are you just going to that park for that? Yeah. So, um, it's with Kristen Marie okay. Photography. I wanted to pull it up and make sure I said the right name, uh, because I'm really bad with the K names. Uh, Kristen Marie Photography. Awesome. Here. Um, and yeah, we're gonna go. We're actually going to um, not that park I told you about. We're going somewhere different. And we're gonna go to that park and do the shoot there, which I'm really excited about. Um, so I'm gonna bring Gaia's jolly ball so we can get some shots of her running. Um, do, maybe get some shots of her doing some cool tricks. And then she's like, there's water there. Will she go in the water? And I'm like, oh, I don't know. She's not gonna like go in willy nilly just for funsies. Um, yeah. But if I she throw her like jolly ball in there, she might go in for her jolly ball. <laughs> That'd be cool. So it will be really cool. Oh, I'm really excited for you. That's awesome. Well, thank you. But yes, you we'll be missing. We'll be missing. Ready to jump in? I reckon we can jump on in. Okay. My younger dog will walk up to the older dog in the house and nip at his legs. What should I do to stop this? Um, so not that it matters because either way we're going to stop this behavior. Mm -hmm. But like younger dog, mm -hmm. like little teeny tiny puppy or mm -hmm. like you're yeah. a year old and the older one's like seven years old. Two years old and 12. Oh, okay. So you're a grown dog just acting like a fool. Walks up to the older dog and nips its feet or its ankles. Right. So, so I'm trying to think. We don't want to compress the air because that's going to be a general correction. That's going to correct the older dog as well. You could manage it and not give the younger dog the freedom. Have them on a leash. Um, have them in command. You can have him dragging a leash um, with a prong, and if he goes to nip his legs, no, grab the leash, leash pop. Um, that would probably be easy. If you got good aim, maybe no in a bonker. Um, but we need to advocate for the older dog. So how to stop it, find a correction that's valuable and it's not a generalized correction. Um, so literally anything that the two-year-old is gonna not like because it's correction, it's not supposed to be fun. Um, let's see, not general, spray can, bonker, leash pop, e-collar if you have one, but I don't love using those just for corrections. Um, and then manage it. Uh, you can teach an out command. So out them before it even gets to that point or impulse control. Like you're going to be on a place and the older dog gets to walk around and you don't get to bite their feces. Mm -hmm. That's rude. Yeah. That's what I think. Yeah. Sometimes when you're in in lieu of like our answer in a perfect world would always be to train up the dog on all the basic commands. And then it just makes it more fair because you can say, no, don't do this behavior with the punishers that Rachel mentioned mm -hmm. and instead do this. So I am pro telling a dog, no, don't do this, but yes, do this because he's mm -hmm. like, well, but I always chase this dog and attack its legs. Well, you're not allowed to do it anymore. When this dog walks around, why don't you just lay down? But what can I do, Susan? Right. You can lay down. You can go right. to play. Commands a dang business. Mm -hmm. Can I just say that you just like gave me like a really fun uh, like deja vu for a second? 
Yeah. Um, so I'll tell a little story here. So back in the day, 27 Q and A's ago, um, before we did these, um, we were talking about, you know, bouncing the idea off of each other about potentially doing a Q and A together. And I told you, I'm like, Susan, I'm going to really suck at this because the problem is my answer for everything is train your dog. I'm like, Susan, how, cause at the time we were just doing 10 questions. I'm like, how am I going to go through 10 questions and not have my answer for each one? Just be train your dog because <laughs> that's a, like it fixes like everything. Now, obviously we adjust the training for each dog, but I like that like whole approach. Mm -hmm. um, so it was funny because you were like, of course our answer is going to be just like to train your dog. But it made me think of that. I remember. And now, that. Right. Because I'm like, what am I? You know, what else would I say? Train your dog. Right. Fixes yeah. everything. Um, but that was fun. And now here we are. Given, given, I think we give a little bit better answers than just train your dog. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with trying the steps before, you know, like just correcting that bad behavior. But if it doesn't work, do the whole training. Right. Um, Susan, I have a question for you. Okay. Um, do you, or actually it's to us, do y'all, uh, allow dogs on furniture? My dogs? Yes. Board and train dogs? No. Um, why? Because my dogs have earned the freedom. They are pretty good dogs, you know, and if they aren't, it's just cut up because I haven't followed through with the training. Big mood. <laughs> Shock. Um, but it's the board and train dog they're doing a reboot. So if I'm training you up, you need to earn that freedom to be on the couch. And so I need you to be, so let's say um, the dog I just had in was Bindi. I need you to be the Bindi that I want before you get these freedoms. So if it's a board and train, I make sure that they're the dog that the owner wants. And once that happens, they can be on the couch as long as they can still maintain their good behavior otherwise. I like it. Um, I don't have furniture. No, I'm just kidding. Um, table. He's sitting on the floor. Um, no. Um, yes. Yeah, so the rules for Gaia currently, um, are she is allowed up on furniture only when she's invited. So she doesn't get to just run up and jump onto the couch, um, or onto the bed. Um, but if I say up, she's allowed up. Um. And then she can like get off when she wants, but you have to be invited up. And I like that just because, you know, sometimes I don't want you in my bubble. So mm -hmm. I wait until like I ask for you to come up. So that's my go-to with furniture. But the only time I'm ever like get my feelings hurt about dogs being on furniture, you know, get my feelings hurt, um, is if the dog's got separation anxiety. Mm -hmm or really any anxiety, but mainly separation anxiety, or any form of aggression, you don't get couch furniture, or you don't get couch furniture. You don't get couch privileges. You don't get furniture privileges. Um, but other than that, I'm like, it's your furniture. It's your house. Um, right. What's my thoughts on that? It's fair. Oh, Susan, side note. Can I interrupt you before you yeah. ask me a question? I just had a thought, okay? Okay. It's going to be really fun. So not next week, because again, no We're not next week. but at some point in the next weeks to come, you know how great would it be to sit here and cut treats while we do a Q&A? Oh, you shut Can up. Can we do that? No, you shut up. I was going to do that today. And I was like, no, because people don't want to see me cutting treats. I guess you wouldn't really see it. I'd just be like looking down here and looking up. I thought about it. Why Let's not? Do it. Multitask. Because I gotta cut them anyway, so I have to cut and them. I, too. I've got look at look at all this. Oh my gosh, I gotta cut all of these. Oh my god. Okay. So okay, I wait till my new fancy scissors get in. See, that's why we can't do it. So two Q and A's from now, we'll just cut treats while we're doing it. Cause that okay. way I can show them that big treat. <laughs> it was like the size. Right. Of but no, that'll be good because then it's like killing two birds with one stone, right? Yeah. It's really it's tough. Good. Okay, cool. I got new scissors I'm really excited about. I'm excited for those scissors. I love the feeling when you cut the treats and then you look in the bucket and it's like all fresh cut treats. Because you know the feeling when you get to the bottom and it's all the dust and you're like, 
But opening the new one and saw cut looks so good. It does look so nice. The last one I cut, I uh, cut the trees bigger than I had planned because it was really hurting my thumb. So I just want to like get through the bucket. Mm -hmm. And now I'm like paying the price for that. And I've like every time I take out a treat, I'm like trying to break it smaller. And I'll my thumbs hurt because of that. Um, oh. But it's so nice. I had one, and I think I took a picture of it because they all look to be cut in like perfect little squares. Yeah. So funny. Um, but let me show you, Susan. Can you see? You can't see the shadow line. I wanted to show you because why, why not? This whole thing is dust. Wow. Ooh, don't get on my laptop. Okay, let's get back to business. I was just thinking about treats because I have uh, 10,000 buckets sitting right here. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so we'll have a treat cutting Q&A. All right. I have heard that it takes a dog weeks to settle into a new house. I'm looking to adopt a dog. Should I wait a few weeks to start training them? Great question. Okay. So it might take dogs a few weeks to settle in, you know, new environment, lots of different sights, sounds, smells, everything. But every single interaction you have with your dog, you're training them. This is like my big thing, right? Every interaction you have with your dog, they're walking away from that thinking, was that good? Should I do it again? Or maybe that wasn't a great choice. Did I gain something from that? Or was it a failure? So I, like Susan, I'm gonna use you as an example, so hopefully I'm not stealing your answer. But when you get a boarding train in, you don't let them hang out at your house for a couple of weeks before you start training them. Um, so when you get a new dog in to your house, you can start the training right away. Now that being said, you don't need to like, you don't, you're not a dog trainer. It's not a board train. So you don't have to go a thousand percent right away. But if you don't want your dog to jump on you, don't let them jump on you for two weeks because they're settling in and then stop it. Because then they've had two weeks of saying, I can jump on you. And, you're, and then you're like, no, you can't. Um, right, so so yeah, exactly. for, it's unfair to allow right. them to jump for those two weeks and then all of a sudden they get corrected and they're like, what the hell? So for me, you know, next dog I ever get, I'm like this special case here. Um, the day they come home, like they're starting a training program with me, whether it be a puppy or whether some other dog mm -hmm. falls into my lap that I didn't ask for, said to Gaia, uh, with love and care. Day one, we're starting training. We're gonna, I'm gonna set you up from day one and teach you right from wrong now. So we can have a great life together. I love that you said that about the board and train because it's true. And it, even my board and trains, yeah, it does take them a little bit to settle in. But that works out really well because the first um, four to five days, they don't get much free time. They're not playing because they're mm -hmm. learning the rules of my house. And then by day five, I start to play with them and they're a little awkward because they're like, we can play now. I'm like, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then by day <laughs> By day seven, they're like, okay, like throwing the toy around, like you actually get to know the dog. So they're going to take a while to settle in anyway. You might as well start training them. That's smart, actually. I didn't even think about that. Because you're right, when you bring a, usually the dog's like, where am I? Mm hmm That's smart. I like it. Um, are you ready for a question that I have for you, Susan? Ready. Um, all right, this one's a fun one. What do you recommend for someone who just wants to learn more about balance training? So this isn't like someone looking to be like a dog trainer, but just someone who's wanting to educate themselves on balance training. What do I recommend? Um, I guess finding a, a good local balance trainer and really picking their brain if they will let you. Um, so balance training is just valuing a balance. Well, so we say yes and no. I like to be able to tell the dog, don't jump. Instead, lay down or exist calmly. So like I value yes and no. So we reward and we reward good behaviors and punish bad behaviors. Not all balanced trainers are created equal. So some use prongs and e collars and some don't. Um, some use you know different techniques. So it's just finding someone that jives well with you. And that's what life's all about, about anything, like finding the right vet, finding mm -hmm. the right trainer. Just find someone that vibes well with you 
and then just really pick their brain because that's what they're there for. And if they don't, if they aren't really open with what they're doing, then that's probably not the right fit. Right. Um, yeah, I like that. Um, it's funny because as I was writing down this question, I put like a little note on the side. Like, so what would I recommend for someone learning about balance training? And I put our Q and A. I want to hear and ask us questions. Um, so for me now, it is a little different because I am a trainer. Uh, what I like to tell people about balance training is just what you said. You know, I want to reward you for what I want. And then there are consequences to our actions. Um, so I kind of explained my methodologies about it. Um, and then one thing, I don't know why this like immediately popped into my head, but I think I'm kind of like fascinated by it a little bit. So maybe that's why. Um, so probably not like the best answer, but the training quadrant. Um, uh, I don't actually remember what it's called. It's not called the training quadrant because it's actually like psychology as a whole and not just for dogs, it's science. Um, but positive reinforcement, negative reinforcement, positive punishment, negative po punishment. When I learned that, that was like so eye-opening for me because society has taken the words positive and negative and taken them to me in like, in this sense, they were like, oh, that means good and that means bad, but it's really add and subtract. Um, so mm -hmm. when I started looking into that and I'm like, you understand the science of it. I'm doing this because I'm adding something to increase a behavior or I'm doing this because I'm adding something to decrease the behavior. I don't know. It's a fun rabbit hole for me. I really, really like the training quadrant. I think it's really fascinating. Um, I know that you, I don't think like it as much as I do. I just think it's interesting. I don't like it as much as you do. Like, I really liked uh, my like psychology class. Um, mm -hmm. And this kind of is on that in a way because it's not just dog related. It is like the psycho like science, like psychology or whatever. That's not what it's called either. But yeah. it's like, I don't know. I really like it. <laughs> Training quadrant. Oh, you can, you can quadrant like it for both. Do yeah. it. I said, you can like it for the both of us. Okay. I like it enough for us both. Don't worry. I was really happy the other day, though, because whenever exactly. I did, remember I did something and you were like, oh, Susan, that's negative. Yes. Yeah. Um, okay, hang on. It was um, negative punishment. So negative punishment is the one in the quadrant that we don't use as often and we struggle to find examples for it. So what negative punishment is negative taken away and punishment stopping a behavior. So you're taking something away to stop a behavior. So in this case, if you're okay, if I tell what you were doing, um, you were encouraging it all to be laying down before opening the kennel. Um, so what you're doing is when you would walk towards the kennel, the dog would stand up that's the unwanted behavior. So you removed yourself mm -hmm. to discourage standing up in the kennel. Mm -hmm. So negative punishment, taking away something to decrease the behavior. And you did that and it got to the point where you could walk all the way up, open the kennel, mm -hmm. and then you could release the dog because each time the dog stood up, there was a negative punishment. You removed yourself. Um, and it's just like so fascinating to me. I don't know why, um, but it's cool because yeah. I'll just throw this out there. Um, positive only trainers, um, treat trainers is what I call them. They actually use positive reinforcement, giving treats and negative punishment, which is the situation that you did, except for their withhold treats. But like negative punishment sounds so awful. I know. But they call them those positive only trainers, but really you use negative punishment. But if it was um, positive only, they would, it would be E collars and phone collars because they're yes. adding something. It's positive. Because it's funny. So before I trained with leash pressure, because uh, the leash pressure is negative reinforcement because I'm taking away the leash pressure to increase the behavior. Won't dive into that. But before I trained with that, I used to train with giving food rewards mm -hmm. and then I would give a leash pop and I would give an e collar correction. So that was all positive. So even mm -hmm. though I use prong collars and e collars, if you looked at the training quadrant, I was technically on the positive side for everything. I was on the positive side for my corrections and the positive side for my rewards. That's interesting. You were a positive only trainer. I was a positive only trainer who used prong collars and e collars. Um, but now I utilize all four quadrants of the triangle. Not, Why? It's, not, it's not a triangle, it's a square. Why? 
Why? Because, because I'm, a balance I'm, trainer. I'm a balance trainer. Can I just say like how strongly I identify with the term balance trainer? And when you were talking, I actually made a note here because I want to talk about it too. Um, I'm sorry. I'm rambling. I don't know where. I know why I have all this energy because I'm not working 12 hour days anymore. Anyways. She's not exhausted. I overbooked myself big time. Um, not anymore though. I identify so much with the term balanced training because I really do feel like it's equal parts. Now, like, of course, I'm not always like correcting like 50% of the time at the end of the training. Like there's not mm -hmm. that many corrections, but in the sense of you do good, there's a reward. You disobey an obedience command or like act like a fool, there's a correction. 50-50, mm -hmm. balance. Whereas other trainers we know are all on one side mm -hmm. and consider themselves balance or, trainers or the other yeah. yeah so i really like it balance training really just sits right with me okay um you said rachel shut up and let's talk, do some dog training questions number three can i train my golden retriever to not jump on me but it's okay to jump on my husband my husband doesn't care that he jumps but i do so, okay, how can I answer this? You can, you can, you can train your dog to not jump on you and that's okay to jump on your husband. That being said, you're gonna have to correct your dog a lot and you're gonna have to correct them harshly, more so than if everybody was on the same page. So they know, dogs know who they can get away with things with, right? So mm -hmm. my family dog, uh, he belongs to my parents. He knows he can kind of do whatever he wants with them. Uh, they don't believe in training. So, like, that's fine. When I'm in the room, he doesn't jump on counters because he knows I'm going to spank him on the butt. Um, not actually. But he knows there's a consequence. So, when I'm around, he's like, let me not jump on the counters. But when it's my parents, he's like, I'm going to jump on the counters. Um, so, yes. That being said, the correction it's going to have to be that much harder because dogs are going to be opportunist. So it's going to take them a while to learn. Every time I jump on mom, I get corrected, but like I jump on dad and I can't. Now Susan's probably like, what the heck? Cause we usually say no to this answer, but like over time he will, I think we usually do. I don't know. It's not fair because he's going to want to try to jump on you. He's going to continue trying it for longer. Whereas if he got corrected for jumping on anybody, he would stop jumping within like a couple days like if he's a really bad jumper. But mm -hmm. with this system, it's gonna go on a lot longer because he's gonna test it a lot longer. But eventually he'll learn, I won't jump on mom, but I can jump on dad. Now, there's a catch. Mm -hmm. When you have guests over, what are the rules? Mm -hmm. He's gonna test it on your guests probably. Mm -hmm. Every time a guest come in, can I jump on you or can mm -hmm. I not jump on you? Right? That's my thought. And then you can do an invited up jump, but that's a whole nother rant. And Susan thinks I'm talking too much because I can tell on her face. <laughs> You're just sitting there. I know. No, I'm like, stop taking my answers. Oh, um, sorry. No, it's fine. So yeah, real quick, you, you could train an up command. So if you say up and pat up here, your dog can jump up. Any other time, no. So it's just kind of like inviting them up on the couch. If you jump up on your own, no punish, or I can invite you up. So that's an option. That way it's very clear for the dog. There's a cue. So it's almost like a command. If I do this, jump up on me, right? So it's mm -hmm. a lot more fair. If you don't want to do that, then like Rachel said, yeah, you sure can. So the dog jumps up on the guy, doesn't ever get corrected. Dog jumps up on you, you correct. But just know that that's not fair. Mm -hmm. If you're okay with that, that's your dog. Um, but I'm just telling you that the dog's gonna be like, what the heck? I'm allowed to jump on dad. Like you don't correct me for that. And now I'm like being corrected for it over here. Mm -hmm. um, and you'll have to come off like nice and firm. And then once you correct it, he'll be like, well, I'm not jumping on you anymore. And he will try it with everybody. Mm -hmm. So you'll have to be like, no, don't jump on Aunt Sally. No, don't jump on uncle whoever. No, don't jump on these people only jump on dad. So it's going to be really annoying because he'll probably try to jump on everybody mm -hmm. or correct him for everybody. But you can do it. Um, yeah. Easiest thing I think is it invited up. I like that. Yeah. It's actually funny because I started I started to train that with Gaia um, and then she got her 
that privilege taken away. Um, but not the point. Um, but it was really cute because I was finally at the point where I could say up. And I only happened like two times before I stopped doing this with her because she was having some potentially separation anxiety. So it's a little more strict with her right now. Um, but I would tell her up and she would jump up and it was super cute. <laughs> okay. But yes, good question. Um, Susan, mm -hmm. I have a question for you. Yes. It's very important. What's my favorite thing? Mm. No. How long do you, no, I'm just kidding. Um, those are my favorites. Um, why do some people train their dogs in another language? Because they can. No. Um, a very good answer. Next. <laughs> Scooch. <laughs> so why do they? Um, I would assume other people might do it so the dog only listens to them. That way, like, I'll be able to tell my dog, whatever, cucumber, and that means to come here. Mm -hmm. Avocado means to lay down, and tomato means place. Um, so, like, you're speaking a language, and only you and the dog know it. So, it's pretty cool. It's yeah. Your code. Yeah. It's unique. Um, and that way, if somebody else tells their dog a command, your dog's not going to respond at all. So, it helps when you're doing commands because I would be able to tell my dog avocado and it lays down, right? Mm -hmm. Their release word is like pickle. So if someone else is releasing their dog from place and they say break, my dog's not gonna move. Yeah, because that word means nothing to them. Exactly. Yeah, so um, I'll let you go ahead. Since this was your question, I'll let you do the fun part. What's the fun part? Why did you ask the question? <laughs> Oh, what I just asked you? Okay. Yeah. Okay, I don't know. Okay. I didn't know if you wanted to share that or not. Um Okay, so the reason I asked this question, the reason this came up in the topic of conversation is Susan and I have decided to take on uh we're each taking on a new training dog. Um they're pretty special. They both have some anxiety and some all around weird weird behaviors that we're gonna address. Um, so the dog I'm taking on as a board and train, her name is Gaia. She's been living with me for a few months now. Um, so that was my smart way to say, we're retraining our dogs. So you're retraining a little and I'm retraining Gaia. Because we know that they can be better. We're training them in German. Because one, it's going to be fun, right? Um, while they already know the other commands and we could, if we wanted to retrain them the same commands, we figured why not start completely fresh mm -hmm. with them, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and like, for like me, for example, like the reason I really leaned into the, the language change or the command change mm -hmm. is because Gaia has, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Negative experiences uh with some of these commands so training to her w the place i got her from they did not tra make training fun at all um they were the preach were a balanced trainer but not really use food rewards at all so not really balanced um so her experience with training has just been stressful and pressure and sucky so for me like i didn't want to say down and her like get scared mm -hmm. anymore you know and i could have counter conditioned and i couldn't retrain but i'm like why don't we get a whole new freaking word so that's what I'm doing with her. And it's like almost made me cry the other day when I realized that she didn't know how to food lure, which is step one in dog training that the people who trained her just flat out skipped with her. So that's why I, also because Susan Peer pressured me, but that doesn't matter. Um, that's why I chose to train in another language. What about you, Susan? Oh, hey, Joe. How's Raven? Hi, Joe. I was so confused when you said Joe at first. I'm like, your husband's oh. joining us? No, that's Raven's dad. Hi, Raven's dad. I've heard a lot about Raven. <laughs> um, it came up on my, um, it came up on my, not time hop, but like Google nice. photos, like two years ago. Oh, I miss her too. I had her two years ago here. So she Aww. came up on my um, Google memories from two years ago. 
And uh, like she had been watching the cat and the cat walked by and she didn't react. So I was like, good. <laughs> that was so cute. That was cute. I have a picture of her because they, they got a picture of her and put her in a frame for me for Christmas. Mm -hmm. And it's on my fridge. I know. I remember seeing that. Mm -hmm. So cute. Um, that's so cool, though. That's like, I used to think like the memories and the time hop. Um, yeah, she was. Yes. Um, yeah, first and the best. I mean, I still hear hear about her to this day, two years later. Um, but no, I love that about Time Hop because it literally is like, it takes you to like another world, like two years ago. Yeah, like, which brings me why I'm training my dog. Very um, good way to tie that in, right? Susan. You like that? So my dog Little is a delicate flower and I've grown and learned a lot. I used to used to train more I think I was more stern, mm -hmm. not strict, but more stern um, because I did follow the trainer that trained Gaia. Um, and I was just, I don't know. I think I've softened mm -hmm. appropriately. So we've actually balanced now. Yes. Both um, of and now I know to treat each dog independently more so. So I treated little like Sadie. And Sadie's very receptive to like sternness, I guess. Like mm -hmm. I would just be stern with her. Um, little, you do that, and she crumples into a like a little flower. She just picture a flower that just like wilts in on itself. Um, so same kind of thing. I say down, and she's like, and lays down. Um, and I just didn't want her to be that way. So I'm resetting with new words. So it's gonna be just a fresh slate. Um, so that's why I'm doing it. And like yeah, it. so, um, with Raven, they said that she was broken. So they had taken her to one of those nice box pet stores and she's had some issues. Um, something has pet in the name or something. I don't know. Something like that. But, um, <laughs> the trainers there said that she was, um, defective and that they could take her back to the breeder and get their money back or take her to the vet office and get blood work done because she has a chemical imbalance. First of all, no. Second of <laughs> all, blood work's not gonna show you that. So yeah. So when they called to schedule or when they called to like talk about that. Because you were at the vet at the time. Mm -hmm, um, I answered the phone and I was like, well, thank God that was me that answered the phone. Um, I said, I'm starting my own dog training business. So, you know, I'll help you guys out. And if it works out, just refer me to everybody that you know. And it worked out. And she so was great. awesome. And she's not broken. So She's not broken. How crazy is that? Um, I Because I was thinking, I was like, Raven's the one. And I was thinking that was a story. And I was going to ask you, like, that was her story, right? Um, so I'm glad he said that. Those, those box stores, those positive only trainers. Um. This is just rough, man. And the thing is, I don't think they get like how devastating that is for an owner to hear that. I know, I know I've shared this story before because it just blows my mind to this day. I was at a phone consultation with uh, this woman and she took her dog to pet blank for training and three trainers there deemed the dog in train roll because it was a husky and it jumped on people. No aggression, just excitement. And it's like, I told them, I'm like, I'm so sorry. They were like, we were devastated. They said our dog was untrainable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just as um, his life was crushed. I'm sure, like, I can't, uh, can't imagine having a dog and having a problem and then going to somebody who's supposed to be professional and who's supposed to, like, help you. And because it's not in their skill set to fix the problem, mm -hmm. they say that your dog's broken, there's something wrong with him, they're untrainable, rather than saying this isn't in my skill set. You could find mm -hmm. something else though. Like, I think that's so important. I mean, I've had dogs before I had experience with more of the serious aggression cases. Um, I still haven't had anything crazy. Um, but before I worked, before I took any aggression cases, I referred people to other trainers. I said, that's not something I'm equipped at this time to handle. Please contact this person at this training facility and they can help you. Mm -hmm. But well, because there was okay, a rant. So, I'm just in a ranting mood. 
I know. So owners go to like these people that they're supposed to trust. And if those people tell you something, you're going to believe them, right? It's like, well, this is a professional. They would know. Mm -hmm. Owners don't know to be like, no, that's not right. And uh, <laughs> Aww. so yeah, Joe says now she's the best dog ever. Thanks to people like you too, Bravo. So no, I thank like you too. Yeah, I mean, I put in work, but yeah. Joe has put in work as well. So I'll have a good night, Joe. Thanks for coming on. So it's like, they have to put their their work in too, but it really disgusts me that professionals will do things like this and to call mm -hmm. them professionals is like generous. But going back to Snookums, this puppy that I had, oh. um, you know, she was like fourteen weeks old. I don't remember exactly how old she was at the time, but it, I was fourteen. Yeah. So fourteen weeks old, and uh it was the only reason I knew of her is because she was friends with my mom's friend and um, she was doing puppy biting, I guess rough puppy biting, but her owners were older. And so when they get bitten, their skin's more fragile, you know, so it's going to be a significant bite, right? Well, when I went, Oh, so the vet recommended euthanizing her and just starting over fresh with a new dog and 14 dog weeks old. Yeah, dog trainer is one thing, but like vet is another. So most people are going to take to heart what their vet says because they've gone to school for like nine years, seven to nine years. So it's like, wow, they would know. No, most of them don't know about behavior at all. They really don't because they can't. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they know all about internal organs and ears and eyes and hearts, and they have to have so many specialties. They can't be perfect at everything. Right. So... <laughs> Usually, I would not recommend calling your vet for dog training advice. I just wouldn't. Seriously, um, it's not like no. they do it on purpose. Well, this guy, I won't talk about that guy. But That's a whole different trash show. Know, um, they do their best, but they already have so many specialties that they have to be good at. Like, don't call me about your dog's health problem. Right. Because I call Susan about my dog's health problems, so I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah. It's not my job. Like, that's not my lane. I, I don't know. And anytime I am talking to a client about things, like, I can't tell you. I've got this one client now. Their dog's had, got, had some, like, bladder issues or whatever going on. I can't tell you how many times in a sentence I specify to them. Mm -hmm. I am not a vet. I, I don't know. Contact your vet. But these people have never owned a dog before. So, like, I want to give them a little something. Uh, but I'm like, I am not a vet. So, please contact a professional. Um, so, mm -hmm. I would, I hope, I wish that trainers would have the same, uh, not trainers, vets would have the same, give us the same courtesy and say they're not a trainer. Contact a, a professional dog trainer. Mm -hmm. um, because... I uh, separation anxiety is the main one that makes me or anxiety in general. Um, because how many times have you met a dog on anxiety medication and thought, wow, you're super calm and happy. You don't need these anxiety meds. Yeah. You see a dog on anxiety meds and you look at them and you're like, you're a hot mess. I can see why you're on these meds. Whereas mm -hmm. like as trainers, we can train dogs and get dogs off of those anxiety medications and they can live happy lives. So, <laughs> okay. That's that. Okay. <laughs> I don't know how to that, but still. Scooching on to the next one. Whose turn is it? Um, I'll let you go. I don't yeah. want to be rude. Okay. Crating dogs a must? Um, I am a huge advocate of crate training. That's my answer to that. Um... I'm a huge advocate of crate training because I can sit here and tell you all the potentially horrible things that will happen if you don't crate train your dog. But I don't crate guy when I'm not home. So I crate at night. I think it's a must. I think it's a really important skill set for your dog to have. Um, you know, if your dog's got to go to the vet, that's already stressful, right? And then they're going to be put in a crate at the vet. So if they're not crate trained on top of that, there's another stressor, right? 
Um, there's just situations where your dogs would need to be crated in emergencies. And if they've never been in one before, you're just giving them unnecessary stress. I think it's a good skill for dogs to have. Um, but I know some people who have never put their dog in a crate and are fine until their dog needs to be in one. Yeah. So I always tell my people I am a huge advocate of it. Um, but if you're not going to create train your dog, then that's not usually something I'm going to say that I won't work with you because of usually depending on the dog's issues. Right. It goes back to my no unearned freedom. So I like to give them all this structure and then give them freedom later. Why? Because then there's no ifs, ands, or buts. I know with my training program, I can get the dog that you want. Mm -hmm. I can get that dog. But, the movies? yeah, depending on what movie you watch. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I can get that dog. I can get a relaxed, calm dog that can right. exist. I can't say you're a dog, aggressive dog, who want to play with dogs, but I can get them to exist with dogs. Mm -hmm. But by doing the structure first, I can get you that dog. And now that we have the dog that you want, what's the recipe for success? How much structure versus freedom can they have? I'll let you know. So if you're like, you know what? My dog's doing great. I want to see how good he is out of the crate. And then you let him out of the crate and overnight he chews on a box of pens and your wallet. And guess what? You're going back in the crate because you don't make good decisions on your own. Um, that being said, my two dogs, right? Sadie and Little. Sadie's never created ever, ever, unless I'm training Little and Sadie like wants to be part of the training. I might put her in her kennel because it's like, not your turn. Mm -hmm. um, but with Little, now that I'm gonna start her board and train in April, she's going to be created just like all the other board and train dogs because I wanna set her up for success. I wanna give her the best chance possible, structure first, freedom later. So, do you have to create your dog? Your dog will let you know. Your dog will let you know. I like that. I was thinking it's funny, on a side note, because you talk about, like, you say the recipe for success a lot. Mm -hmm. um, when we talk about, like, the structure after training. So, like, I tell my people, you know, do this 90-day protocol, lots of structure rules, blah, for 90 days. Then you can, like, take some away, see how your dog does. And this is, like, not related to anything, but you call that a recipe for success. In my head, I'm thinking of, like, a science experiment. I'm thinking of, like, independent and dependent variables. And now we can, like, pick and choose which science experiment is going to make, like, the perfect dog. And I think that every time. And this time I wanted to say something about it. But it is. Yes. It is. That was random, I know. Um, but I like that answer. Your dog will let you know. I like it. Okay, wait, with everything. Um, What's a good punisher yeah. for your dog? Your dog will let you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so I was thinking of a dog that I'm having trouble finding, but that's a conversation for another day. <laughs> um, I got a question for you, Susan. Yep. That's sure. how I'm going to start out all of my questions that I've got a question for you. And that's how you started them so far. It's, I got to keep it up, you know? Um, but for real, how do you know? Mm -hmm if biting from a puppy is just puppy biting or if it's like actual aggression? So I watch, I'm gonna say their intent and it's easier for a trainer to know their intent. So when in doubt, seek out the help of a trainer and they should be able to let you know. But watch their face, right? So you'll know, like when a dog, when a puppy's just like mouthing, they're kind of like, nah, 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 their mouth is mm -hmm. like, they're like nom nom and then they might bite you and then go bite a toy and then whatever you'll see their the the change right so you're walking and the dog's like staring at you and all of a sudden they like their head might go down their ears go back and they like lunge and growl at you or bite you like it's all in their intent so watch the dog really watch the dog they'll let you know but it's it it will look like they have the intent to bite, not just a puppy like chomping on you like a toy. Right. Last thing too. What about you? I like that. No, um, exactly what you were saying in the beginning. I'm like me, I can just look at it and know, but 
it's a lot of body language for me, right? So if you're bouncing around, tripping over yourself, being like, you know, like you're a drunk little puppy, like flooping everywhere. And like you said, just mouth is on things. And even if like I get up to you and oh, mouth, you're being fully, but if you're being stiff and it's like, like, I think it's quicker too, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so oftentimes, like when you're looking at dog body language, if the dog is like flowy and moving, like then they're just being a goof. But when you get really stiff and it's that quick or bite, like I'm going in for the bite and that, that's my intention is biting you. Not, I just want to put my mouth on things. And that's how I tell, just like, the body language and usually puppies and that's why when you see puppies they're all usually all like falling tripping over themselves because they're just goofballs um okay so yeah. this conversation right like that right there made it's like i could have i could see myself having a puppy because the like the stumbly stupid drunk right really cute but like they're a lot of work too <laughs> So, Susan, you're going to get on this wait list for me. No, I can't get on it now. We're going to get to Mally together with me. Huh? Well, wait like five years. I'll wait six months to a year. Because then we're going to get a Mally together. Because I was thinking today, I was having some issues today and reminding myself that I'm not getting on this wait list now. The wait list is a year. Um, and I'm looking to get a dog in the next year and a half to two years. But I was training this Piper today and I was having a fun time training Piper. I took a video. I forgot to send it to you. And I'm like, I need a dog that's high driving and wants to work like this. Oh, so fun. Well, so we're going to go. It's going to be great. I need to get my DNA test on Little first. Yes. Can I want to see her come back as a Malinois. That's going to be really funny because she's not even supposed to be, right? She's Shepherd Australian. Yeah, she is. She's Australian Shepherd Malinois. She's supposed that's to. I thought she was Australian Shepherd, German Shepherd. Yep. So do that DNA test. I want to. I want to be like 97% Malinois. Right? Because if she does come back Malinois, I'll be like, I can do it. Because she's such a flu. <laughs> do it. Look, Susan, do it. I, I'm not saying Guy is a Malinois. She's a freaking couch potato, big headed, dumb pity. Love where's my whole heart. Um, I'm going to be going from literally. <laughs> night today so the breed doesn't matter Sadie at least acts like a Malinois I think what happened was there's a weird some sort of like science explosion where if you took the DNA of all these dogs that actually created a Malinois it would be a boxer pit bull border collie <laughs> yeah when you mix those three that's where border that's where bells and Malinois originated from oh, okay well, boxers are from Germany, so. That's where they came from, too. Mm -hmm. That's funny, though. When you think of, like, a boxer face and then the Malinois ugly face. <laughs> Call them ugly, but I want one. It's going to be great. It's going to be great, though. So. In five years. In a year and a half. You don't want to have a Malinois and a Gaia. Yeah. It'll be fine. Guy just wants to sleep. But in a year, she'll be like, she'll just be. You'll feel bad taking your Malinois off property and Gaia's at home. Sucks to be kind. No. <laughs> she'll be okay. fine. She'll be, no, because what we'll do is I'll take her out to play jolly ball and she'll be knocked for the rest of the day. And then I'll take the Mally out and we'll go for a hike and I can have them climb up freaking like 30 rock? feet tall boulders. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, I want one. I want one. I want because I want. Okay, we'll get one soon. I'm, I was trying not. I was with Piper today. I was doing speed drills with her. Um, I will just go off on this thing real quick. Um, usually for our dogs, right when they're new and they're puppies and they're training, well, let's work on sits for a little bit. Then work on downs for a little bit. Then we're gonna work on plates for a little bit, right? Um, in the beginning of training, now Piper's done like puppy program with me, but that's fine. This dog is so smart. I was like, I'm going to mix them up. I'm going to ask her different commands randomly and see how she's responding to just the verbals. So I'm standing beside her place cot and randomly running her through, sit down in place. Mm. What? This puppy is like... 16 weeks? Yeah. Four months, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm just on the verbal, sit mm -hmm. down in place, just boom, 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 boom. That's nuts. 
And I'm like, Mallies are going to be so much fun for me. So much fun. <laughs> After their potty train. Yes. Okay, dog training question for you. Okay. I have a question for you, Rachel. Do you? Yeah. Okay. My nine month old Springer jumps on my wife, but not me. Why do you think she does this, and how can we stop it? Well, do you correct the jumping and your wife doesn't? Yes. Um, <laughs> then that's why. So just as Susan previously mentioned uh, in her question before, then you've trained your dog to jump on your wife and not jump on you because you've corrected it and your wife hasn't. So correct it. However you did, uh, however you corrected it, that was effective for that dog. So if at all possible, have her do that. If not, find a correction that she can give the dog that is valuable to the dog in the same way. So what if, she doesn't want to be mean. Well, she can enjoy being jumped on by her dog. You know what's <laughs> really mean? Sorry, that was really incredibly sarcastic. Um, okay. You know what's really mean? When your grandma comes over and because your dog thinks it's okay to jump on somebody, uh, your grandma's at the front door, walks through the door, your dog jumps on grandma, knocks her down the stairs, and now she's in the ER. That's pretty mean. So don't jump on me because it hurts and you can hurt somebody. Mm -hmm. um, but a less sarcastic answer, you know, I mean, it's not mean. Is telling, is giving kids mm -hmm. like rules mean? Mm -hmm. You know, like if you have a kid, do they get to like jump on the dining room table mm -hmm. and demand ice cream for dinner? Mm -hmm. Or do we not let them do that? And if we don't let them do that, does that mean, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. No. Nah. So back to your answer to the question before, let's be really clear that we don't jump on people. And then down the line, if you want the dog to, you can bite them up. Mm -hmm. But structure, rules, boundaries, it's not mean. And if so, I'm just so mean. Well, you are mean, but that's not why. Oh yeah, you're right, actually, I'm pretty mean. You should hear the things he says to me. Okay. You I'm pretty sure you called me a really mean name right before we got onto the Zoom, so. I don't think I did. Actually, you called me a dumb biatch. I don't think so. I did. That wasn't right before. That was like half an hour. Well, I listened to it right before because I was late listening to your message, so. Oh, I got on this Q&A with hurt feelings. And I came in like a professional and sat here with your dumb self. For this hour. Until this moment. You can close yourself until this moment right here. You pushed me over the edge, Susan. No, we are honestly, we are really mean well, to each other. I have a question, though. Okay. Do you Next know, seven minutes. Do you know that song, I Feel Good? Uh, is it the one that just is like, um, I don't know, Susan? <laughs> Probably like James. Could you, could you sing it and dance it for me? No, but I would like you to. Oh, okay. Should I do some like toe jumps too? Toe yeah. catch jump things? Yeah. Oh. Anyone who doesn't know what Susan's referring to on a mystery Q&A, this dude got on here and started asking us to dance to this song. And I did not find it amusing. So if you want to find that comment, go listen to all 27 or 26 of our other Q&As. And you'll find it. Find it. You know what's bull, Susan? What? I posted that Easter egg in one of our Q&As. Oh, I was like, halfway through, I was like, hey guys, if you hear me saying this, comment blah on this post. Nobody did it. Y'all suck. I'm just kidding. There's one person watching, by the way. Thank you for watching. Um, Maybe on Susan's face. What? Oh, great on my page. Sorry. Yeah. Um, no, two years from now, they'll comment. I was thinking. I'm, oh I'm gonna lose it because I'm gonna be like, I, it's some random emoji too, and I'm not gonna say it because people watching this wanna. Um, yeah. But it's like some random emoji. Um, thanks, Jessica, for liking my post. And like two years from now, that I'm going to start getting comments on that YouTube. That's that emoji. And I'm going to be like, what's this about? Oh, it was to comment on your picture. Like you posted a random picture. Remember? Yes, I did. I posted a picture the next day. And I'm like, this is the date. Go, on, go scroll through and find this picture. Which I'm like, nobody's going to do that. 
But then that trainer that we followed, I would scroll like way deep in their page looking for stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, I scrolled through like years back to find pictures of Gaia when they were training her. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Um, since we have one person watching, if they're still watching, one last <laughs> question. Okay, we'll give you what you came here for. What are a few things you think every dog owner should know? I think every dog owner should know that every interaction you're having with your dog, you're training it. That's my big one. It's not a command. It's not anything. But if you're doing something with your dog, if you're allowing them to do it, then you're training them to continue doing it. Um, so I had one client. They're like, they wanted their, it was like the end of the training. They mentioned uh, wanting their dog to stop jumping. And that was on my bad. They briefly mentioned it to me when we started training. I forgot, right? Well, every time I saw them, their dog would jump up and they'd like kind of pet it or whatever. Dog graduates training and they're like, how can we address the jumping? And I said, oh my gosh, I didn't know like, you really actually wanted to. Uh, cause it looked like you were like petting the dog, whatever, blah. And they were like, well, no, we just didn't know how to stop it. But that interaction every day, you were training your dog to keep jumping. Um, so just be really mindful of your actions with your dog. That's my thing. I want every dog owner to know, be mindful of what you're doing with your dog and what you're unintentionally training them. Yeah, no, that's good. Um, a few notes I had, dog parks are toxic. Mm -hmm. So that's one note. <laughs> Not only for diseases, but other dogs. Oh, hey, Tether! Okay. <laughs> says, cause I'm just sitting here trying to suck up all of Susan and yours too, Rachel's brain. Howie and Penny are still out cold, by the way, Susan. <laughs> oh, I'm good sure I heard about how awesome the lesson went. Yeah. Oh, so all their good. commands are on the e-car now. Um, Heather's doing an awesome job with Hallie and Penny. So I'm glad that you're here soaking up everything. If you have any questions, let us know in the four minutes that are left. Thanks and, for watching. Uh, yeah, you happen to you happen to join in when we're just like bullshitting half the time. I know. I know, I promise. Sometimes we do like we're like questions, 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 but sometimes I'm feeling a little ranty. Yeah. Today is one of those days. Uh, okay, sorry. Um, I've got an interview. No, it's good. It's good. Dog parks are toxic, so not only for the diseases, because like, I would oh, take literally Sadie, toxic, <laughs> literally toxic. I would take Sadie to the dog park when there's nobody there, and there's like diarrhea everywhere. And so the first thing I think of is worms. I'm like, ew, mm -hmm. worms. Plus, I don't know y'all's dogs. I'm talking like Rachel. I don't know y'all's dogs. Oh, well, all right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but like, it's a good place have a recipe for disaster not success mm -hmm. um because people don't watch their dogs like they'll just let their dogs do whatever and they don't pick up on the signs that i would so if i go to a dog park at all it's to practice like healing outside of it or outing a dog away from the fence on the outside of the fence um running them through their commands having dogs you know distract them but i wouldn't go inside a dog park now um the other thing is your dog is for you mm -hmm. Yeah, your dog is for you. People will ask me, like, I'll be, like, I'll say Bindi's people. Um, we were at Lowe's. And, of course, if you have a well-behaved dog, everybody and their brother is going to want to come up and pet them. And some people will ask, and some people won't. So if I'm out with a board and train, I am doing this. Like, I'm looking around at everybody you, to make sure. You froze there. Oh. Um, I said, if I'm at a, if I'm at, uh, like Lowe's and I have my board and train in LA, I am constantly like searching around to make sure mm -hmm. like no one's touching my dog. Like I'm watching and advocating for the dog. Um, but like Bindi's owners were saying, so if someone comes up and asks to pet her, what do we say? Because you don't want to sound rude. And mm -hmm. I'm kind of, I don't care if I sound rude anymore. Like I'll just be really short now mm -hmm. because I'm tired of giving a reason. I don't need to give a reason. Like no is a complete no. sentence. Yeah, no is a complete sentence. So, and like this one time, okay. My dog is for me. Your dog is for you. So I was at Pet Something, big box store, and um, I had Bindi in a lay in the front of the store. So when you oh first, my gosh. when you first come in the doors, there's Bindi. But of course, I'm gonna set her for success. So if somebody's coming in with a dog, somebody was. And the dog was at the end of their leash. I broke her out of the lay 
so that nothing terrible happened because the dogs learn that you advocate for them. So I'm not going to let this dog approach my dog in a lay because my dog can't go anywhere and that's not fair. So I took, I broke her and took her out of the lay and this dog was like coming right for where Bindi was. I took her around like the little middle, like the, the middle section where they like have pallets in the middle of the floor. So I took her around it and I put her back in the lay. The dog walks right past, like right up to us again with this guy. So I broke her out of the lay and I moved again and he walked back and in, into the store somewhere. Mm -hmm. So I set her back where she was to begin with. And then like three minutes later, he comes back and I'm like, what are you looking for here, guy? Like, what are you doing? So as he's walking up, the dog's in front of him and like Bindi's here. So I'm like, Bindi, break or whatever. I'm like, break. He's like, she wants to say hi. Can they meet? I'm like, no, she's mm -hmm. in training. So that's why he kept coming back. He wanted his dog wanted to say hi to my dog. So he wanted them to like meet. And I was like, no, she's in training. And of course he was like, <laughs> uh, my oh. dog's here for your dog's pleasure. Okay. Right. Um, socialization. Oh, that's another one. Mm -hmm. Socialization between dogs isn't two dogs meeting. It's two dogs just existing. Existence of socialization. So that's something I think owners should know too. You don't have to have a dog play date and the dogs run around and like play with each other. You just have to mm -hmm. be in the same room, room together and be good. Right. Mm -hmm. I agree Look, with all of the things. Granted, and we went over our hour. Yes, and I have to crop it. Thank you. I'm just messing with you. I'm just messing with you. No, those were like all really good points. And now because we're over an hour, it doesn't matter. Um, but those were all like really good points. And I was having a conversation with one of my puppy owners uh, the other day. And they are really excited to have this dog and take her out and let people meet her and talk to people and do all the things, right? So we had a talk about um, not letting her meet every single person. I don't know if I told you this. This was uh, something... Um, uh, somebody who is learning about training therapy dogs and service dogs, they actually told me this because I asked this person, I said, you know, for me, socializing is being out in public, but I don't let people pet my dog. I don't like nobody gets to pet them because they're client dogs and that's a liability and you're gross to mm -hmm. so stay away from me and my dogs. But I asked this person, I'm like, you're training therapy dogs and service dogs. Well, service dogs don't need to be pet, but you're training therapy dogs and their job is to be okay with being pet. So how do you go about socialization? And it was cool because it was like, whereas I don't let anybody pet my dog, they let every third person pet the dog or every fourth or fifth, whatever they choose. They let that person pet the dog. So two people ask, no, they're in training. Third person, sure, you can pet them because that teaches the dog that you don't have to like pull to every person. But sometimes yeah. people pet you. That was a random fact that like wasn't related to anything we were talking about. But I told these people to do that because they wanted to let everyone pet their dog um, because it's fun and it's exciting and she's a cute puppy. Um, but I was like, if anybody ever tries to pet your dog without asking, like if they do one of those sneaky pets or Ugh. walk up and just get in her face without letting her, I would not let that person pet her. I don't care if they were the third person because I, just out of, no, you're not touching my dog. And if it's a grown dog, I'm going to tell you that they bite so you can crap your pants a little bit while you're at it. <laughs> um, so Rachel knows me, so hopefully she thinks this is true. Why? But like, I don't, I don't get very excited about many things. Like, nothing really gets me going. Like my blood boiling. I'm excited. Like I'll be happy and excited, but nothing gets me like okay. angry. About, like, you know what I mean? Like, but man, when I have people like <laughs> when I sneak up and put the dog I have, I get real, real testy like i'll be voice memoing rachel I'm like this guy tried to touch bindi like bah! and like yelling. <laughs> um, okay so oh because like i was at lowe's and i had beast who's this really big mastiff oh my gosh i remember mm -hmm. when you were telling me about this and um this lowe's worker he saw me in passing and he's like hi ma'am or whatever and i'm like don't call me ma'am anyway so he's already on my shit list but I'm like, <laughs> Anyway, so like we're at the front of the store, have Beast and Lay, and he comes up. He's like walking up, and he goes and does this, like puts his hand out in front of Beast's face. Now Beast is nice, blah, whatever. But like what Rachel said, this is not my dog. So if something happens, 
I'm screwed. Mm-hmm. So like he bends down like this and I'm like, please don't pet him. He's in training. And literally he didn't move. Like, it's like he didn't care that I even talked. He was just like, oh, you know, had his hand there. And I'm like, I almost body check people. Like I'm, I'm this close to snapping that I'm just going to like body check you out of the way. And I, I think I, I think I spatial pressured somebody one time because like, <laughs> here's the dog. Oh yeah. And like somebody's coming this way and I'll sneak in and be like, oh, I did that with Bindi. We were at Staples. Um, we were at Staples and like this lady came up and they pretend like I'm not even there. Sorry, I'm ranting. Um, no, it's fine. I'm all for this conversation. So I was, I was, I'm at Staples and Bindi's like sitting there because she was in a heel. And this lady comes up and let's say if I'm looking at you like this, that's me, right? So she's like this looking at the dog. Oh my God, you're so cute. You're such a good girl. Oh, Reaches out to pet her and I'm like, hello, where, who am I? <laughs> and I'm like, I literally walked towards her and I was like, don't pet her. I'm like, please don't pet her. She's in training. And she's just like, oh. go off Susan. And then walked off. I can't, I don't know. It, it's like this close. <laughs> it's so I, think I, I think I am more fortunate in this situation because I have a severe resting bitch face. Well, like, so do all people and I'm, I'm, I'm like seven feet tall though too. Like I'm, I'm wow. don't mess with me. Right. <laughs> so I've got that going for me. I don't often have people bother me, but it's funny because I went into, I took guy to the baseball field yesterday. Um, my dad's a baseball coach. So I was like, oh, I'll just like go visit while he's got a game. And I got there and I had the mindset when I got out of that car. I'm like, if anybody asks me to pet her, I'm going to just say no. I need to stop saying no, sorry. No, she's in training. Yes. No, a, I, I will say no. Thank you for asking. Because thanks for asking and not being a jerk. But it's just like, no. that was my mood. I'm just going to say no because I wanted to take her to the park, but I was having anxiety about people petting her and trying to pet her. And like, I felt like I was going to walk into the baseball field and just be swarmed by people because I had a dog and it made me mad. I want to go out and enjoy my dog. And there's a freaking pandemic and nobody at the freaking redneck baseball field is wearing a face mask. Second of all. Um, and it's like, I want to enjoy my dog. I want to not go places because I'm going to get swarmed. Luckily, that didn't happen because I do not look very approachable. So everything was great. Um, but my plan was to just say no. If it, now nobody asked me. But that's my goal. The next time somebody asks me to pet my dog, and at, at any time somebody argues the no, they're aggressive. That's my go-to. When owners are like, well, what do I say? It's like, because, you know, people want to push, which is like the audacity. Could you imagine Going up to somebody and asking them something, if they say no, arguing them about it? No. no. Uh, my dog's aggressive. They'll bite you. Well, and I've told, I've told Rachel, so now, like, if someone just walks, <laughs> if someone asks, I do say no, thanks for asking. I'm like, no, she's in training, thanks for asking, because, like, it's nice that you asked. Right. But if someone just walks up to pet my dog, or the dog I have, I think I'm gonna just, I'm just going to be like, no! <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Right. Or you know, like, what? Oh, I'm just gonna walk up to them and like touch their arm. Why is it any different? Right. Oh, tell like, your tell 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 the uh, video we're gonna make. Oh, the baby baby video. Um. So as you know, Heather, I get upset when people like just randomly want to touch my dog. Okay. So I was telling Rachel because there's two schools of thought on dogs. Dogs, by law, are your property. By law, they're property. The other half of society, it's my baby, right? Dog's my baby, blah. So whether your dog is your property or your baby, what gives you the right to come up and touch my dog? I don't walk up to your baby and give him a hug and pinch your cheeks. And I don't walk up to your porch swing and sit on it and take a couple swings on it because I think it's fun. So don't use my property and don't hug my kid. Don't touch my dog. So the video that Rachel so beautifully <laughs> thought of to do was um, one of us will have a baby, but we don't have children. So we're going to borrow somebody's baby. <laughs> and the other person is going to come up and just reach out to, like, squeeze their cheeks. <laughs> and then what? Who's going to – whoever has the so baby. So whoever's holding the baby is just going to freak out. 
So that's why I'm like, we need to have a baby doll because I want to be like dramatic and I guess you can't be holding someone's kid like screaming. Um, but like holding this baby doll and you come over to like pinch its cheek and like I'll freak out and like scream and like hit you with some pressed air. Or like slap. <laughs> like do, we should do one of those really dramatic fake slaps. Yeah. Where it's like I go like that and then a second later you're like, oh. Um, but like don't touch my baby. So why would you walk up and pet somebody's dog? Yeah. It's beautiful. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be really funny. So next time we get together, um, we need to do that. Yes. So we do. Well, Susan, as much as I love sitting here and talking to you, I actually only you signed up to talk to you for an hour, and I'm kind of ticked off that I had to talk to you for ten minutes longer. Um. So next Q and A, we're not doing one next week to make up for it for these ten minutes. Thanks. Okay. Uh, real talk though, no Q&A next week on April 6th because Guppy and I are getting our pictures taken for a little photo shoot. Um, but we will be back on April 13th at 6 p.m. for Q&A number 28. So that gives you all plenty of time to think of your dog training questions and to get back with us with them then? on the 13th. Yeah, then. Yeah, yeah don't come at me. Um, yes, it's been a lot of fun. And... Thanks, everybody, for watching. You can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at Pack Leader Dog and Rachel Color Dog Training. Good night. Happy training.